so today I, it's a small little webinar, which I think it's interesting um, about soft tissue and how they move and how they can deform depending on what you do to the hoof. So um, we went to a clinic and we took some data on live horses that were barefoot pre-trimming. So no one has manipulated the hoof. We took the hoof as is and we did that over uh, 10 horses. So it's just the start of uh, a little study with it for our own, own entertainment and other people entertainment. Um, so basically that, that's the first horse. So this is a horse that, that is a breeding stallion and he has a little bit of a high-low, um, probably would need to, to be um, uh, trimmed. As I say, we didn't touch anything because we wanted to take things as is. So as you can see, this is a live, it's a live horse. Um, it's, it's pretty high, but you know, it probably needs a trim. And we actually gradually lifted um, the, the, the hoof through a device. We did also medial, medial laterally, so there's more to come. Um, but this is at the end where, where the horse decided, I will not stand on that. It's, it stopped at uh, 10.6 degrees, okay? So what's interesting, this horse has already has a high palmar angle, you know, and I don't think he has the best stance. As I say, it needs some maintenance. Um, and then, you know, after we raised, raised the heel by a, a, a lift, or that could be equivalent of a wedge pad for a, a laminated case, uh, by 10.6, so you, you, you change the palmar angle almost by 21 degrees, which is a lot. And what's interesting um, is to see what happened when you raise the heel to that extent. This is a radio opaque marker, so we can see where the coronary band ends, which is right at the end of that marker. And uh, we're going to see what happened. So just a side note, uh, we have ways to actually enhance our uh, x-rays. So we can see the white pigmentation of the wall, the coronary band. So we did a bunch of uh, study on, on cadaver legs, which split in half and then take x-rays and we can see it match. So I can see where the white pigmentation of the wall is and other things are interesting that you can glean out of an x-ray. So what happened? All right, before lifting the, the, the foot, um, you, you have a pretty much, uh, you know, about the same, same corium, corium uh, width, you know, from on the dorsal wall. And as you lift, lift the heels, well, things start changing because you are basically pushing the foot forward onto the dorsal wall and it's not exactly too happy. There are other things happening that is not very good. So you can see, you know, the AJL zone, which some people don't take anymore, but that's interesting because they're pretty much sim similar. When you raise the, the heel really bad, quite quite significantly you're actually changing that agile zone so it's 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 always interesting to me to see what the people consider derotating because you really need when you take an x-ray to see what happened to the corium um, so it's another thing which is interesting when you really raise the heel very high uh, you're changing also the position of the extensor process and a lot of people don't understand because this is a sagittal cut but you see, when this is getting pushed forward, it's quite a big distance that goes into, in, into the wall, you know? So you have to think about that. So here we measure the, the and normally it would call this fonder space, we call it P3 descent here. Since it's not fonder, I call it length because it's a, it's a quote, normal foot, if there's such a thing. So look at the distance. Um, you know, of the, the extensor coronary band to the extensor process is 0 0.22 before and after it start dropping, it's 0 0.32. Uh, it's, it's a question of whether actually the foot is sliding down and forward or the coronary band is started stretching and you have tissue stretching. So, you know, it depends which comes first, the chicken or the egg or the egg before the chicken. So look at how the, the, the corner band is being stretched, which is not a good thing. You know, over time, you're going to have problem. Again, this is not the laminate course, uh, but you, the, the idea also with tissue, you try to keep them in a steady state and not try to do something too strange. You know, even so, 
it, it's a keratinized and dead material, it does affect also the, the soft tissue underneath, like the corium. Um, not a great foot, but you can see also some horses cannot stomach wedge pad, and some horses do okay. You know, it's not black and white, but what you don't want to see is a movement also changing the displacement of the collateral cartilage. You know, there's a certain space they have to be in, and if you start standing, changing things quite a bit, you're also changing the structure, creating puffiness. Again, not a great foot, but that's the normal foot, need shoes, but that is not something I would do. So this is your ungural cartilage, four, and you can see to the uh, side view or lateral view. And, um, you know, again, if you have also pathologies in that, to think about it, what happened when you raise, raise the heel, it's not very good. So this is the foot, and you can see also, this is what I call the sole arch. I mean, soles have different shape. They, they have very different shape. And um, you, 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 know, you can actually crush also a shape of the, of the sole. This is a very high arch, as a lot of heel probably needs to go down. I mean, seriously needs to go down. But again, we did it pre-trimming. Um, but that's not, that's not a good thing. And look what happened before and after lifting. So you can see it's crushing also the, the bottom part of the foot and it's also crushing, crushing the arch upon loading. A compensatory stance is very complicated. I don't think people understand exactly what happened throughout the body. It depends on the conformation of the, they, they compensate for stance back to front, front to back. I don't think there's a number for that, but you have to consider that. So this is the other foot. It's, it's, it's still a good Palmer angle. <clears throat> it's almost six degrees, the other one much, much higher. Uh, but you will see the same issue happening. So um, the Palmer angle before adding a, a, a wedge pad or a lift was almost six. You know, that would, that would actually increase the Palmer angle if you were to take the lift and, and the Palmer angle together to 17 degrees. So, and you can see at the end result, you have the same situation happening. You have a stretch coronary band. You have a change in sole arch because of the load is tipped forward. And they still, the body compensates. So that, that actually gets crunched. It's not, uh, I mean, I'm talking the heel. All this start getting pushed, pushed down. The tissue, the arch here can be pushed down. All right? Um, and, and again, note the change change um, in sole arch morphology, you know. So, and we have, we, ha we have before lifting the heel, after lifting the heel, you can see also again, the pedal bone is pushed against the dorsal wall, um, and that's creating some grief. It's also stretching the coronary area. So this is before and after, and you can see the coronary band to extensive process or, or the P3 descent, as we call it, or if it was a founder case, we call it the, the founder distance, okay? So anyway, so you can see the difference, you know, that it descended quite a little bit more because things got, in, get stretched and pushed forward. So you can see it before lifting. Also, what's interesting to see, it's actually the stance, uh, the, joint, the joint space, and also the, 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 the kinematics of those joints have changed quite radically. And that's a little worrisome. So that's another horse. Again, we, we have more. It's a three-year-old uh, warm blood. So it's still a young horse. And I, I have actually seen this horse three years later. It's interesting to see how the foot changed. And that's for another conversation. But again, I'm, I calculated the lengths from the extensive process, uh, not the descent, but the length extensive process to the coronary band before and also the sole depth before. Palmer angle is six, you know. Foot is under the bony column. Again, was wedged with uh, uh, 13 degree. I mean, it's a lift. And that's when the horse decided after 13, I'm done. Um, so, and you can see again, this is changing. The curvature is changing. The sole depth is changing. Palmer angle, which is interesting in this case, increased. But I think part of it, again, you have different type of sole arch, and I will talk about that, and weakness in the sole arch, so it change also how things compress due to load. So this is the data. 
You can look at it. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm going to let you read it. And what we did, we actually did a morph. What's interesting is actually the displacement in, in, in the soul arch as you change, change the load, you know. Um, and it, it's also how the horse will compensate over something that then that foreign to them. You know, it's very unique. It's a unique to the tissue quality. It's unique to the pedal bone. It's unique to the horse. You know, a long horse doesn't compensate the same as a short horse. A horse that has a long pastern doesn't compensate as the same as a horse that has a short pastern. Okay, so it's not written in blood. Um, so you know, it, it's 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 compressing in that case the toe arch. But it does also have some ramification when people actually use a lot of wedge pad. And I'm not saying you should never do, do it, but you should do it a little bit with having some sorts, uh, especially if you have pre-existing pathologies. So this is a horse that had a compensatory lameness. It's dead. I didn't do it. Um, I was not, that was not a bad, bad issue, but... You know, they were worried, and I think they failed to understand that uh, collateral cartilage calcification, you can create problem because of the position of the, the, um, the venous system, okay? Everything is tied together. That's upon arrival at the clinic. That wasn't bad. And, you know, they were worried, so I do understand that. That's, you know, things happen. So, and this is after, after treatment, the, the, you know, so they wanted to, quote, derotate it or preventing the derotation, and that didn't go very well for this horse. It might go very well for some horses, but I think, again, the collateral cartilage that are so damaged, like in the case of this horse, might have not been a good thing to, to raise the heel. Later on, I will talk more about biomaterial uh, function, uh, what is mechanobiology, all these things because it's really important in, in tissue, especially mechanobiology and tissue renewal. So there's a lot of really interesting things because the whole idea is to stop going into, um, you know, this, I do this because of that and compartmentalize your, your approach to, to problem. You need to kind of take other field and try to understand that, you know, every situation is a little different and not try to have a formula for every single foot.